Welcome to a lesson on echelon form, pivots, and free variables. The goals of this video are to define row echelon form of a matrix, define the pivots of a matrix, and also define the number of free variables of a matrix that represent a system of equations. Here are four examples of matrices in echelon form, and let's see why. A matrix is in echelon form if the following three conditions have been met. First, all zero rows are at the bottom of the matrix. This matrix here is the only matrix that has a zero row, this row here, and notice how it must be at the bottom. Second, all leading non-zero entries in a row are to the right of the zero entries. So notice in all of these rows, if there are zeros in the rows, the non-zero entries are always to the right of the zeros. The six is to the right of this zero here, the five is to the right of this zero, this negative four is to the right of these two zeros, and so on. And then lastly, all elements in a column below a leading coefficient is zero. So here's a leading coefficient. Notice below it we have a zero. Here's a leading coefficient. Below it we have all zeros. Here's a leading coefficient. Below that is another zero, and so on. Another way to think of row echelon form is to have a triangle of zeros in the lower left-hand corner as we see here, here, here. Notice how it's not always a perfect triangle, but that is a nice way to remember row echelon form. Next, the pivots of a matrix are the first non-zero elements in a matrix in row echelon form. So for example, if we want to find the pivots of these four matrices, four and six are the pivots of this matrix, two, five, and negative four, are the pivots of this matrix. Here we would have two, eight, and positive two as our pivots. Notice this row here does not give us any pivots because all the elements are zero and pivots are non-zero elements. And then for our last matrix, the pivots are negative three and positive two. Next, if we consider a system of equations written as a matrix in row echelon form, if there are P equations, with Q unknowns or Q variables. If P equals Q, there are no free variables. But if Q, the number of variables or unknowns, is greater than P, the number of equations, then there are P minus Q free variables. This also means it will be an infinite number of solutions to the system of equations. Let's take a look at some examples. We want to determine the system of equations the matrix represents and then determine the number of free variables. We're told here our variables are x sub one, x sub two, and x sub three. So our first equation would come from this first row. We would have two times x sub one plus one times x sub two, or just x sub two, minus three times x sub three equals five. Our next row we would have five times x sub two minus one times x sub three, or just minus x sub three, equals fifteen. And the third row we would have negative four times x sub three equals to positive twelve. Notice how our matrix is in echelon form. We're also asked to determine the number of free variables. Well, notice how we have three variables and three equations. So if we have three variables and we have three equations, three minus three will give us the number of free variables. So in this case, we have zero free variables. Let's take a look at another example. Same question, different matrix. Notice how our variables are x sub one through x sub four. So the first equation would be negative three x sub one plus two times x sub two plus four x sub three minus three x sub four equals positive one. And the second equation, this would be two x sub four equals six. Again, our matrix is in echelon form. We also want to determine how many free variables we have. Notice in this system, we have four variables or four unknowns, but only two equations, so four minus two will give us a number of free variables. So in this case, we have two free variables. The 
This tells us we would have an infinite number of solutions, and because we have two free variables, we can represent the solution parametrically by introducing two parameters or two additional variables, usually variables like s and t. Let's go and take a look at one more example. Here we have five unknowns and four equations. So the system of equations would be two x sub one plus x sub two minus three x sub three plus five x sub four plus eight x sub five equals ten. For the next equation we would have this would be eight x sub three minus three x sub four plus four x sub five equals fifteen. This fourth equation we would have two x sub four plus three x sub five. Notice this last row, because all the elements are zero, does not give us another equation. So we actually have five unknowns with three equations, and since five minus three is equal to two, again we have two free variables. And again, because we have more variables and equations, we know we would have an infinite number of solutions. Okay, I hope you found these examples helpful.